Morning, Liz. We put together some segments that included some of our favourite things on this trip. Liz made a flannelette insert for our sleeping bag. Wow, was this the best thing, as we experienced nights well below zero on more than one occasion. This ended up being our very, very favourite thing. Before we made the Wilford Park, we would travel through a small outback town known as Stonehenge. Whilst it may not resemble its namesake in the UK, this quaint little Queensland town with a population of around 44 people is situated one kilometre from the Thompson River, just out of Floodreach. A little further towards Junda, you crest the jump up and Swanvale Lookout. What a fantastic spot, with special views in most directions. Then it was on to a native well. Wells such as this were a valuable water source for indigenous people in days gone by. They vary in size ranging from 30 centimetres to a couple of metres in diameter. was established in 1992 to protect the biodiversity of the Mulga lands, Mitchell grass and Channel country. There are lots to explore in this park including the river, desert and Mulga drive. But first it was about getting into camp and getting set up.
do, we wanted to explore the area, so headed off to do the River Circuit Drive. This drive takes you along the edge of the Thompson River, covering large expanses of Mitchell grass in this black soil country. One of John's favourite things is afternoon tea.
As we continue on the Mulga Drive, we come across a series of old farm relics. These show of an era not that long ago. You stop and savour the moment, and we can only imagine how hard it must have been to have worked this land. Drive also includes and involves a short walk to Sawyer's Lookout. Wilford National Park is also home to the yellow-footed rock wallaby. Unfortunately, we didn't see any on this trip. There could be something there though. Yeah. For them to all be like that. Second hand, I felt a bit forgotten. Now you plan, but now the days of silence outgrow the fun things we have done. But tell me, do you want to carry on? Plants don't grow without water, and they cave when it's cold. We So long. 
Eureka is truly the hidden gem of outback Queensland with a fascinating history. The story of Eureka dates back to the early settlers and pioneers of 1860, though the town was officially founded in 1917 when the rail line opened from Emmett. The railway station was called Eureka after the indigenous name for the white spear grass which grows in the district. With the golden opal rush over, a population of 20 call Eureka home. The township is a place where memories of the past are strong. A quick drive up to Mount Slocum, the gem of Eureka, with a tar-sealed road winding its way to the top, where we enjoy stunning outback views, even in the middle of the day. I can only imagine what a sunset or sunrise would be like from this stunning place. Oh well, next time. Idalia was to be the last of the three national parks that we explored. It is situated 113 kilometres south of Blackall in the Gowan Ranges. This 114,000 hectare national park protects extensive Mulgra woodlands and is the headwaters of the Baku River. As we headed off to explore the gorges and rock formations found in the Gowan Range, the first one we came to is Rainbow Gorge. This walk is only 100 metres from the car park once you're there, you see a mass of white, red and yellow stained sandstone. We continue on to see the lasting results of Mother Nature's scorn as she scoured out the small gorges and waterways. Idalia is the home to seven species of macropods. Wallaroos, red and grey kangaroos, swamp wallabies, black striped wallabies, yellow-footed rock wallabies and endangered bridal nail tail wallabies which all abound at Idalia. Red and grey kangaroos graze on open plains while yellow-footed rock wallabies inhabit high rocky escarpments. These animals are well camouflaged and leave the sanctuary of their rocky homes only to drink and graze at the base of the cliffs. The road continues on until you reach the Emmett Pocket Lookout. Wow, look at that. We also have a phone signal, so we can confirm our booking in a few days at Bonus Downs.
Welcome to Bonus Downs. The homestead was built in 1911 by one of the country's most famous landholders. He contributed hugely to Australia's rural progress at a time where a young and developing country needed such foresight. People described him as Australia's greatest pastoralist because he was so innovative, so keen to improve on what nature had provided. His name was Sir Samuel McCorkney. He purchased Bonus Downs in 1909 when it comprised of 300 acres and was devoted solely to cattle. Believing the land was more appropriately suitable to sheep, McCartney converted Bonus Downs. Five years later, Bonus Downs was shearing 130,000 merinos at a 42 stand shearing shed and employed over 100 men. After Sir Samuel's death, the property has passed through several hands before Lyle and Madonna Connolly purchased the property in 1990 and set about the painstaking restoration of the Bonus Downs homestead. Today, Bonus Downs homestead is ranked amongst the oldest established properties of the Maranoa. We took a drive up to the Uline Forest to enjoy the tranquility of this amazing spot. Bonus Downs is acclaimed as passionately preserving some of the last standing Uline forests. Once widespread in the bottle tree dominated softwood scrubs of central Queensland, the Uline has suffered a major decline. A relic of the Goodwanan rainforest, which once covered inland Australia millions of years ago, it's an example of a tree once relatively common but now threatened. The survival of these trees in these areas makes it even more unique given these are found in a hot dry climate in stark contradiction to their rainforest origin. After we finished our look around the property, we headed into Mitchell, where we would chill out for the rest of the day with a counter mill, followed by a soak in the artesian water. Second hand, I felt a bit forgotten. Not your plan, but now the days of silence outgrow the fun things we have done. But tell me, do you wanna carry on? Plants don't grow without water, and they cave when it's cold. We Your head 
Hey guys, thanks so much for your feedback. Liz and I really appreciate it. I'm continuing to dig through the library of trips and we'll have some more content in the coming weeks. So remember, stay safe and sometimes the journey is the destination. Cheers. Thunderbird 2, here's go. All the tables have